Imagine a young disciple, driven by an intense longing for spiritual truth, who challenges the very foundations of his spiritual community's practices. What happens when a seeker's fervent quest for divine realization collides with the deep human struggles of his revered teacher? Welcome to another video in our series on Swami Vivekananda. In this episode, we delve into Narendra's critical perspective on spiritual practices and his intense spiritual quest under the guidance of Sri Ramakrishna. Watch as Narendra confronts the pitfalls of emotionalism in spirituality, faces the challenges of his master's deteriorating health, and experiences profound spiritual revelation. Discover how these pivotal moments shape Narendra's understanding and commitment to his spiritual path. Narendra's alert mind soon saw this dangerous trend in their lives. He began to make fun of the elders and warned his young brother disciples about the harmful effect of indulging in such outbursts. Real spirituality, he told them over and over again, was the eradication of worldly tendencies and the development of man's higher nature. He derided their tears and trances as symptoms of nervous disorder, which should be corrected by the power of the will and, if necessary, by nourishing food and proper medical treatment. Very often, he said, unwary devotees of God fall victims to mental and physical breakdown. Of 100 persons who take up the spiritual life, he grimly warned, 80% turn out to be charlatans, 15 insane, and only five, maybe, get a glimpse of the real truth. Therefore, beware. He appealed to their inner strength and admonished them to keep away from all sentimental nonsense. He described to the young disciples Sri Ramakrishna's uncompromising self-control, passionate yearning for God, and utter renunciation of attachment to the world. And he insisted that those who loved the Master should apply his teachings in their lives. Sri Ramakrishna too, coming to realize the approaching end of his mortal existence, impressed it upon the devotees that the realization of God depended upon the giving up of lust and greed. The young disciples became grateful to Narendranath for thus guiding them during the formative period of their spiritual career. They spent their leisure hours together in meditation, study, devotional music and healthy spiritual discussions. The illness of Sri Ramakrishna showed no sign of abatement. The boys redoubled their efforts to nurse him, and Narendra was constantly by their side, cheering them whenever they felt depressed. One day he found them hesitant about approaching the master. They had been told that the illness was infectious. Narendra dragged them to the master's room. Lying in a corner was a cup containing part of the gruel which Sri Ramakrishna could not swallow. It was mixed with his saliva. Narendra seized the cup and swallowed its contents. This set at rest the boy's misgivings. Narendra, understanding the fatal nature of Sri Ramakrishna's illness and realizing that the beloved teacher would not live long, intensified his own spiritual practices. His longing for the vision of God knew no limit. One day he asked the master for the boon of remaining merged in Samadhi three or four days at a stretch, interrupting his meditation now and then for a bite of food. You are a fool, said the master. There is a state higher than that. It is you who sing, O Lord, thou art all that exists. Sri Ramakrishna wanted the disciple to see God in all beings and to serve them in a spirit of worship. He often said that to see the world alone without God is ignorance, Agnana. To see God alone without the world is a kind of philosophical knowledge, Nana. But to see all beings permeated by the Spirit of God is supreme wisdom, Vijnana. Only a few blessed souls could see God dwelling in all. He wanted Narain to attain this supreme wisdom. So the Master said to him, Settle your family affairs first, then you shall know a state even higher than Samadhi. On another occasion, in response to a similar request, Sri Ramakrishna said to Narain, Shame on you! You are asking for such an insignificant thing. I thought that you would be like a big banyan tree, and that thousands of people would rest in your shade. But now I see that you are seeking your own liberation. Thus scolded, Narendra shed profuse tears. 
he realized the greatness of Sri Ramakrishna's heart. An intense fire was raging within Narendra's soul. He could hardly touch his college books. He felt it was a dreadful thing to waste time in that way. One morning he went home but suddenly experienced an inner fear. He wept for not having made much spiritual progress and hurried to Kashipur, almost unconscious of the outside world. His shoes slipped off somewhere, and as he ran past a rick of straw, some of it stuck to his clothes. Only after entering the master's room did he feel some inner peace. Sri Ramakrishna said to the other disciples present, Look at Narain's state of mind. Previously he did not believe in the personal God or divine forms. Now he is dying for God's vision. The master then gave Narain certain spiritual instructions about meditation. Narain was being literally consumed by a passion for God. The world appeared to him to be utterly distasteful. When the master reminded him of his college studies, the disciple said, I would feel relieved if I could swallow a drug and forget all I have learnt. He spent night after night in meditation under the tress in the Panchavati. At Dakshineshwar, where Sri Ramakrishna, during the days of his spiritual discipline, had contemplated God, he felt the awakening of the Kundalini, the spiritual energy, usually dormant in man but aroused by the practice of spiritual disciplines, and had other spiritual visions. One day at Kashipur Narendra was meditating under a tree with Girish, another disciple. The place was infested with mosquitoes. Girish tried in vain to concentrate his mind. Casting his eyes on Narain, he saw him absorbed in meditation though his body appeared to be covered by a blanket of the insects. A few days later, Narendra's longing seemed to have reached the breaking point. He spent an entire night walking around the garden house at Kashipur and repeating Rama's name in a heart-rending manner. In the early hours of the morning, Sri Ramakrishna heard his voice, called him to his side and said affectionately, Listen, my child, why are you acting that way? What will you achieve by such impatience? He stopped for a minute and then continued, See, Narain, what you have been doing now I did for twelve long years. A storm raged in my head during that period. What will you realize in one night? But the master was pleased with Narain's spiritual struggle and made no secret of his wish to make him his spiritual heir. He wanted Narain to look after the young disciples. I leave them in your care, he said to him. Love them intensely and see that they practice spiritual disciplines even after my death and that they do not return home. He asked the young disciples to regard Narain as their leader. It was an easy task for them. Then one day, Sri Ramakrishna initiated several of the young disciples into the monastic life and thus himself laid the foundation of the future Ramakrishna order of monks. Attendance on the Master during his sickness revealed to Narendra the true import of Sri Ramakrishna's spiritual experiences. He was amazed to find that the Master could dissociate himself from all consciousness of the body by a mere wish, at which time he was not aware of the least pain from his ailment. Constantly he enjoyed an inner bliss in spite of the suffering of the body, and he could transmit that bliss to the disciples by a mere touch or look. To Narendra, Sri Ramakrishna was the vivid demonstration of the reality of the spirit and the unsubstantiality of matter. One day, the master was told by a scholar that he could instantly cure himself of his illness by concentrating his mind on his throat. This Sri Ramakrishna refused to do, since he could never withdraw his mind from God. But at Narain's repeated request, the master agreed to speak to the Divine Mother about his illness. A little later, he said to the disciple in a sad voice, Yes, I told her that I could not swallow any food on account of the sore in my throat and asked her to do something about it. But the mother said, pointing to you all, Why are you not eating enough through all these mouths? I felt so humiliated that I could not utter another word. Narendra realized how Sri Ramakrishna applied in life the Vedantic idea of the oneness of existence and also came to know that only through such realization could one rise above the pain and suffering of the individual life. To live with Sri Ramakrishna during his illness was in itself a spiritual experience. 
It was wonderful to witness how he bore with his pain. In one mood he would see that the Divine Mother alone was the dispenser of pleasure and pain, and that his own will was one with the Mother's will. And in another mood he would clearly behold the utter absence of diversity, God alone becoming men, animals, gardens, houses, roads, the executioner, the victim and the slaughter post, to use the Master's own words. Narendra saw in the Master the living explanation of the scriptures regarding the divine nature of the soul and the illusoriness of the body. Further, he came to know that Sri Ramakrishna had attained to that state by the total renunciation of woman and gold, which indeed was the gist of his teaching. Another idea was creeping into Narain's mind. He began to see how the transcendental reality, the Godhead, could embody itself as the personal God and the Absolute become a divine incarnation. He was having a glimpse of the greatest of all divine mysteries, the incarnation of the Father as the Son for the redemption of the world. He began to believe that God becomes man so that man may become God. Sri Ramakrishna thus appeared to him in a new light. In our next episode, we journey through a transformative period in Narendra's life where his spiritual quest takes him to Bodh Gaya, the sacred site of Buddha's enlightenment. Experience his intense meditative realizations and the profound guidance of Sri Ramakrishna as he navigates these mystical experiences. Don't miss the unfolding of Narendra's remarkable spiritual evolution and the critical role he will play in shaping the future of the Ramakrishna order. Thank you for listening till the end. Please subscribe, turn on the notifications, like, comment and share with your friends. This will help more listeners to discover our channel and content.